Hey everybody, uh, I decided to go ahead and do a, a yet another video. Since I've been having so much fun with them, I figured, well, what the hey, I might as well uh, continue to do do videos. It, it takes uh, not much effort on my part, and uh, I really have enjoyed uh, sharing with everybody all of the uh, all the stuff that I do on a given day. Um, Today I thought that I would go ahead and uh, attempt to make a steal your face pendant. I put that in the description um, and I have a printout of kind of a clip art steal your face. Hey everybody. Um, so this general shape right here is what I'm going to be making. So basically the body of the pendant and then he'll have some cheekbones, some eye sockets and that that top jaw part uh, of a skull right so uh, as a matter of fact I have a uh, custom order request for several of these and uh, so I figured I'd you know kinda get started uh, I met a, a really great gal in uh, New York City when I was up there a few weeks ago uh, her name's Zoe and um, she's really awesome and she works at a shop and uh, she saw my my personal pendant that I'd made that I kind of refused to sell because I like it so much and she was like well how about two or three of them you know so anyways that's what I'm thinking I'll do also if you had tuned into the video that I did last I had attempted to make a birthday cake for myself and uh, at the very beginning of that video I had explained how the um, you know how I'd never attempted a birthday cake and how it how it might very well you know break and and be trash um, and as a matter of fact as I you know through all of the discussion and talking and um, I failed to keep the piece hot enough and so as soon as I put it in the kiln you know that looks like a birthday cake right but then it cracked right down the middle um, so you know again it's an, it's another learning learning experience um, and I know, I know uh, pretty much why this cracked. It cracked because I failed to keep it hot enough. The surface was hot and the interior was cold. Uh, and that temperature differential is probably what made it crack. I don't think there was an air bubble in there. But what I think is kind of cool about this, and since it's sheared off pretty much dead in half, I'll be able to make a, a little birthday cake pendant out of it. Um, and I've got the other piece right here as well. So, anyways. We might get to that in another video. Um, that's kind of uh, the way it goes, you know. Uh, one of the things that I thought about is, you know, talking about is, uh, about how glass has rules to it. And, um, you know, if you know the rules of glass, um, you're going to succeed more often than not as long as you follow those rules. Because, um, you know, if you respect the glass, the glass will uh, treat you kindly. And if you don't, it won't, right? So it's important to know the rules of glass uh, in case you were wondering. Uh, also, um, I think I failed to put this in the description, but one of the things that kind of came up as an idea or a topic for discussion last time is the uh, this idea of perception versus reality. And... Um, you know, it came up as a topic kind of in my mind uh, because, you know, the birthday cake and, and how, uh, what makes a birthday cake look like a birthday cake, the visual cues, how do we perceive it? Um, and, you know, kind of, if we think about this, that, you know, what I love about glass is there's so many different avenues and analogies that we can use. Um, uh, with glass and with life um, you know so perception versus reality and I you know I, I've been thinking a little bit about that today today's Monday uh, so I hope you guys are having a great Monday um, you know sometimes Mondays are a little challenging right so uh, you know the case of the Mondays right this Monday has been okay for me uh, but I think it's a good topic for a Monday a perception versus reality you know getting back to work you might be oh, I don't want to be doing this right now so perception versus reality let's you know maybe think about that um, anyways I think this is a pretty good good shot the camera's about where it was last time if you guys are having a hard time hearing me 
or if you could just kind of confirm for me um, the audio quality, that, that's one of the kind of the X factors in this whole Facebook Live thing. It seems, seems like the uh, Facebook Live might be a little bit glitchy. I went ahead and turned my phone on airplane mode, which is the Wi-Fi enabled. Um, so if you guys could just rate the audio quality maybe between uh, 1 and 10, 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. Um, last time the video's audio di didn't fritz out, I don't think at all. Um, I went ahead and reviewed that video. Also, I, uh, I figured out a way to post it onto my uh, YouTube account. Uh, so it's kind of archived there. Um, in my YouTube account, in case you were wondering, uh, I believe the handle is just Cat Blast. Um, that's that's the uh, that's the account, the the Google um, e Gmail account that it's linked to. Um, sounds good. Give it a nine. Awesome. Thanks, Clayton. Um, so, anyways, what I'm going to be doing first is uh, this right here. This piece of glass rod in my hand is, I believe it's e either Irid or Turquoisea. Turquoisea? I don't know, that kind of sounds ghetto, right? Come on, Turquoise, girl! <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, stripe this, uh, it's a kind of a cobalt blue color. And I'm going to stripe it uh, several times, maybe four or five times lengthwise with um, with some white, some some very dense white, and I will twist and pull and make a, make a piece of cane that way. Then what I plan on doing is taking a piece of clear, making a flat spot, a disc shape on the on the end of a rod, and twisting it in a spiral. So laying that twisty cane down in a spiral, so it'll have twists going this way, and it'll also spiral out going this way, um, and then. Uh, kind of continue the process, pull it off the clear, make a face, you know, make, make the jawline, make the uh, make the teeth, make the eye sockets, um, you know, not necessarily in that order. Um, and I'll try to do my best to explain as we go along. So, first step is kind of a, you know, kind of a preparation step. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat up this, this rod a little bit. And, um, this color has some silver in it, I believe, um, and so it also has kind of a, an element of, of striking ability to it. Uh, so there, there are oxides in the glass that are not apparent uh, when it's raw glass, but as you work it, these elements will come to the surface. And this is a great color, uh, in case you're a glass blowing friend, um, it's a really great color to pull in the stringers and um, use in an implosion. Because what, what happens in that situation is uh, when you implode it uh, and it's encased in clear, it starts, um, it, it releases some of the, uh, the silver that's in the glass and it, and it creates this kind of ghost, ghost outline of silver um, around the dots of your implosion. So um, there's there's actually a steal your face pendant. Uh, the one that I wear uh, is is an implosion with this particular color. Um, and if you're if you look very closely at it, you'll see that there's let's see I've got three, maybe two more two more lines. You'll see that there's a uh, kind of a ghostly uh, light, light blue, um, fumy silver looking haze around each one of those dots. Um, and, and that's, that's just the nature of this color. I think it's really, really pretty. Um, so anyways, you can kind of see where we're at there. Got five lines uh, and it's fairly well, uh, they're fairly evenly spaced. Um, it, you know, it matters somewhat that they're evenly spaced, um, but if they, you know, if one is a little bit off, um, it's not going to make a whole crazy difference. Uh, and the reason is, is we're we're twisting it up. 
Uh, so it's going to spiral out anyways. Um, so yeah, the the strip in white that I used is actually um, a color that's manufactured in China, and it's just called Chinese dense white. Um, and I, I believe, in my experience, anyways, it's it's one of the best whites uh, available right now in boral silica. It it's a uh, it is very, very dense, and it kind of goes on forever. You can take this stuff and stretch it and stretch it and stretch it, and, it, and it'll just keep giving you more and more, whereas uh, a lot of colors, as you stretch them and thin them out, they'll actually, uh, you know, fade, and you won't be able to tell. So uh, this white, it's, it's really good for making cane, um, it's really good for using in a, a, a wrap and rake. I mean, it has a, a, a whole lot of uses, but um, it's also the contrast, you know, if you think about your color theories and all of the, uh, the different, you know, uh, one of the things in, you know, art is color theory and contrast, so um, those, those things are pretty important when you're thinking about, okay, you know, what is this piece going to look like? You know, how am I going to create it? Um, so anyways, let me uh, pull this other rod off and you guys will be able to see kind of this, this blank. So what I did is I just, I have, um, you know, a rod in my right hand and I just kind of stalled that rod. I, I spun it less than I spun the other rod and, um, and that creates that twisted effect. So, and what's interesting about making twisty cane is that the um, you can twist it and you can also untwist it. <laughs> so when I go to lay this uh, twisty cane down I'm gonna have to remember which way to twist it, which way to spin it. Um, and that way I'll be able to uh, to kind of keep that that twisted effect. I uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to pull this down a little bit to make it uh, the smaller diameter. So, like, if you guys were ever wondering, if you're not glass blowers, I know there might be a few glass blowing friends that have tuned in at this point. Um, but, you know, if you ever go to a shop and you're looking at a pendant and, you know, the price says $80 <laughs> or $150 or $400, you know, you, you might think to yourself, holy crap, that's a lot of money to be spending on a pendant. Um, but, you know, uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. You know, one of the reasons is that um, you know, this is an artistic endeavor. It takes, it takes quite a bit of time sometimes. Um, you know, maybe the prep work for that particular pendant, it might have taken somebody a day just for the prep, you know. So, um, you know, I think also one of the neat things about this uh, this whole platform with Facebook Live and, you know, doing videos is, is, you know, the idea that, you know, this exposure to um, glass, uh, handmade glass, art glass that's you know that's made here in the states, um, and you know if if uh, if somebody's never been exposed to kind of what it takes to make glass, they might not have an appreciation for uh, the time it takes and and the effort that goes into a piece. Um, and understandably, at that point, you know you might not see the value as much in in a particular piece. So uh, I think maybe part of the mission here is to educate and inform, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, uh, glass and, you know, kind of what I do and, and you know, what a lot of my friends do, um, these are uh, some of the luxury items, you know, uh, one of the things that, you know, it's, you know, right now I'm making a piece of jewelry, you know, jewelry is a pure, it's purely a luxury item. Um, you know, it's there to be pretty. It's, you know, that's what it's for, right? So, anyways, oh shit.
Nope. This one went from PG to PG-13 real quick when I dropped that, huh? <laughs> I was thinking about that. Like, okay, if I'm gonna be like reposting some of these videos on, uh, so that's where we're at with that piece of twisty pain. Um, you know, if I'm gonna be reposting some of these videos on YouTube or something like that, I might need to kinda watch my language, you know? Uh, so anyways. What I really also like about this kind of this uh, this live thing is that um, I don't have to do any video editing, you know. It's just, it is what it is, you know. And I have the excuse of, oh, well, it was filmed live, so if I misspeak, I, I realize I say um a lot, um and uh, you know. Um, so, and so, exactly, so. But I have the excuse. Well, it was filmed live. So, anyways. Maybe I'll just honey up here, clean up this a little bit. I just barely tacked it on there, so I want to make sure that my little handle here is good and strong so that when I when I go to lay this thing down, it's it's not gonna start going crazy on me and break. And you know, you say that a lot too. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. You know what I mean, you know what I mean? Yep, that's right. So, anyways. So I hope everybody's doing well on this beautiful Monday afternoon or early evening now, I guess. I'll, uh, I'll try to keep this video now it seems like an hour might be kind of the maximum. Um, what are the tools you got there on the table? Uh, good question. I've got a lot of tools actually on the table. Um, what I'll be using today, I've got a bunch of tweezers. Um, and so when I go to make the eyes, when I go to make the uh, jawline, um, these guys will come in really handy. Um, I have a friend that says, everything on your bench is a tool. And um, what he means by that is, you know, this glass rod in my hand is a tool. It's a way to manipulate the glass that I'm ultimately trying to make into a pendant, right? So every, everything on the bench is a tool, is what he says. And, uh, you know, there's definitely some truth to that. Um, another, you know, kind of, uh, you know, this right here, the, 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 torch is there's a marver on it which is made out of uh, made out of graphite and it has an angle it has some flat sides to it um, so that's a tool uh, I have a graphite pad that I'll be using which is just out of shot uh, and, and that's also a, a big time tool that that I use a lot um, and so when I go to make the flat spot for this pendant for, for what will ultimately become the back side of the pendant um, that's a tool that I'll use for that. Well, very good question, actually. Uh, what are the tools? You know, we can kind of expand that. When you, when you hear me do that, there's a bowl of water here that I quickly uh, shock the glass with and then dump, you know, then I crack it off. And that's just trash. You know, it's, uh, it's what's called color. So. Yeah, what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm creating a gather, and I don't know if you can tell the angle isn't great, but um, kind of that tool, right? This might need more technique, but, you know, um, a tool in its broadest sense would be gravity. Uh, gravity, you know, hot glass flows with gravity, and um, so when you have, you can use gravity to your advantage, right? And so when I have something that's tilted down, I'm going to naturally create a gather, a gathering effect. Um, if I pull my elbow up and I point the gather down, it's going to naturally want to droop. So. so yeah, perception versus reality actually is a, a really um, thought-provoking kind of a topic. and. Um, 
actually a pretty big, been a pretty big lesson for me in my life, you know, um, because what I perceive to be going on in my life, um, a lot of the times, you know, I, I, for instance, I've had a, I had a kind of a crappy situation happen with, um, I bought an investment house about seven months ago now, and uh, it's in kind of a, it's in a neighborhood, but not the best neighborhood. And before I was a glass blower, I worked construction, so I know how to do all these things to, you know, fix up a house. Anyways, long story long, I fixed up this house. It took months. I did a lot of the work myself. Had to rewire the, the, the whole thing, and um, some poor soul went in there and, and decided he was going to steal the wiring out of the house that I had taken so much time with. And, I mean, it really, it really did upset me. Um, I'm still kind of upset about it, but um, the perception versus the reality, right? Yeah, that really happened. But how can I attempt to perceive that situation differently? Okay, so I've got kind of a gather here, and I'm just going to push it flat. Nice flat. Ooh, that's going to be a pretty big steal your face. So that right there is called a Maria. That's what that's referred to in the glass world. It's called a Maria. So, anyways, right. So this perception versus reality thing. And, you know, I have some of my mentors, one of my mentors would say it's a high quality problem. Um, <laughs> you know, I have an extra house that got burglarized, right? Um, so that's a perception and a reality thing. Um, and the reality of it, it does suck, you know. Um, but, you know, maybe I can change my perception and uh, find a better attitude about it, you know. It's a challenge. Man, is that ever a challenge. Um, so, anyways, what I'm going to do right now is exactly what I described earlier in the video. And um, I also like this Facebook Live thing because uh, it, it's recording. I, you know, this will be posted onto my, onto my Facebook account after we're done here. And uh, in that way, it's kind of an archive. You know, we can go back and look at these things. So, let's see. So this cane is twisted this way. So I'm going to have to... I'm going to lay it in a spiral, but I'm also going to have to twist it as I lay so that it doesn't become untwisted. And this is kind of challenging, so I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to work. I see all you guys. I was thinking about, okay, well, if I do end up archiving these things on, on YouTube, maybe I shouldn't announce who's watching. So, hi everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to start in the middle. And that's kind of where we're at. I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but it'll create a really cool effect. We'll ultimately be looking at it from this way. So I could have done a little bit better, uh, made that a little bit cleaner. My flame wasn't quite 
before I should have had it. I should have had it turned up a little bit. I didn't want it to get too enthusiastic though. Anyways, perception versus reality. You know, as it pertains to glass and like sculptural work, um, that's actually a very good thing to be thinking about as well. You know, it's actually extremely important. You know, and uh, this idea of, you know, when I'm perceiving something, when I'm looking at something, you know, what are those visual cues? What, what makes it look like it, right? Um, the example uh, that we used a minute ago was a uh, birthday cake. When I attempted to make a, a glass birthday cake for myself, the, the question was, you know, what makes a birthday cake appear to be a birthday cake? Um, and my job as somebody that's sculpting that is, you know, how do I, how do I make you perceive it as a birthday cake? Um, so we talked about, you know, candles. We talked about having frosting. Um, and so with a steal your face uh, pendant, you know, what makes this look like a steal your face? Um, and there's several different things on there. Um, you know, the teeth, the, the nostrils, the eyes, the difference in maybe depth right so we can create depth we can create um, the general shape we can create a little more intricate detail and uh, and all of these things kind of define it as what it is um, as a you know still your face um, image so or in this case it'll be a pendant um, so that's you know that's actually a very important thing to be thinking about um, but physically, I think it is too, you know. How, how is what I'm perceiving maybe different from reality? You know, why is it that when I put the birthday candles on that cake, they looked more like candles when they were shaped like cones? You know, why is that? Um, you know, why is it that I can completely lose all perspective of just how fortunate I am um, when one thing goes wrong in a day, or why is it that, you know, when one thing goes wrong and 20 things go right, why is it that I focus on that one thing? Um, you know, these are the things that, um, you know, I think ultimately define, you know, what's a good day, what's a bad day, you know, that's what, that, that's, that's defining, you know, how I perceive my day, how I perceive, ultimately, how I perceive my life, right? And so if we can get ahead of that, I think, you know, we're actually uh, way better off. Um, so, you know, and I mean, I don't claim to be an expert in philosophy or um, any of these things. I just, you know, I sit down here and I think about them, you know? And I think in thinking about them, um, you know, it just kind of helps. It kind of helps me to, uh, you know, it helps me in my life, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So anyways, what I'm doing is I'm blasting the face of this thing. Um, and it's, uh, it's finally starting to melt in. That color, that turquoise in that white is, you know, they're both pretty darn dense. Um, so, we've got a little bit of, got a couple little spots you guys can't see. I, I really wish um, that this Facebook Live thing, I mean, it's about perfect, except for the fact that you have to use your phone and I can't put a filter on this front-facing camera. But, um, you know, man, oh, man, um, I'll try to fill in a couple of these little voids here. Man, that's actually looking pretty cool.
definitely wild style. Definitely wild style. Uh, I like that. I like that wild style type of art, you know. It's uh it's a big big conversation kind of a topic, you know, what's what's art? What makes art art? And uh man, I bet you that would actually that might cause a flurry of comments, you never know. Uh, hey man. I was just telling everybody that I uh I'm putting these things on uh YouTube, I, I think I've kind of decided to do that, and so as a result of that, I'm going to kind of keep my shout outs to myself, but I see everybody that's watching, I appreciate everybody, you know, that's a really, it's, this is just too cool to me, y'all, I mean, I, you know, I'm sitting down here and talking to myself like a crazy person, but it's not talking to myself because you guys are here, and if you weren't here, I don't think I'd be talking to myself, I might be, but. I don't think I will be. So, anyways. Wow, oh, that's going to be really kind of cool. I almost kind of want to keep the back, the front. And, uh, wow, that turned out pretty cool. That's Funkadelic right there. As it starts to cool down, maybe I'll be able to see why I don't, I don't want it to get too, too cool. We might just have to, uh, play it a little more. And uh, decide after we play with it a little more which side's going to be the front, what's going to be the back. It's on, it's on clear right now, but man, is that? Yeah, I think that turned out really cool. I'm much happier with this than I was my birthday cake that I made out of glass. Not my actual birthday cake. That was good, but um, yeah, the one I made out of glass it turned out okay, I guess. So I guess I'm going to punny up with. Um, with just a piece of this, um, the back end of this, <clears throat> I keep saying, um, I need to stop that. The back, the back end of the twisty cane that I made that I backed this thing with. So, that way, if and when it happens that I don't break this punny off clear, I actually might make that another little feature where I twist this up and it'll be like a little uh, dead in the middle extra spirally thing, you know. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the process of tearing this off and lensing it. Lensing it. Uh, so I'll use this this bigger clear rod in my left hand, uh, that'll, that will create the lens of the pendant. So. That's kind of where we're at. So what I'm going to do, and the way I'm going to achieve a nice Dome lens is I'm gonna focus the heat on the very top, and that's going to make the glass dome out. actually going to be, uh, thanks man, I'm glad you think it looks awesome. Um, so, yeah, I'm just creating this lens right now, and as, if you can see it, you see how I'm holding it. I'm really focusing on that very top part, and it's going to make this glass dome out. You know, glass wants to flow with gravity and it wants to become a dome or a sphere. Uh, glass really doesn't like right angles. Um, you know, so it wants to be a dome. It, it, I, I, my job at this point is, is to allow the glass to do what it wants to naturally do. I just have to um, 
I just have to manipulate it in such a way. I have to use, you know, my technique needs to be uh, just allowing the glass to do what it wants to do, you know, so. Wow, this is turning out pretty cool, guys. I don't know, I'm actually really, I can, I can see inside of this thing right now, and I'm actually more impressed with the back side of this thing. So, uh, you know, we'll just have to see. I'll, maybe I'll uh, let it cool a little bit and uh, ask, ask you guys for opinion. Okay, so that's nice. That's turned into a nice kind of a cabochon shape. You guys can see. See how it domed out? No, it kind of reminds me of like sea life or something looking down into it. And uh, I don't know, the backside of this thing is just really cool. Um, so I don't know if you guys are able to see that very well. Yeah. So that's kind of the front side of it. And that's the back side. Huh. Yeah, I can't decide. Well, you guys want to comment and let me know what you think. If you like this side better, or if you like that side better. I think I'm going to go, probably I'll go with the, uh, with the lensed outside. Um, and if they want to turn it around, I'll, I'll try to make the loop so it's reversible. Not a bad idea, right? Um, okay. So, the next step in this process is I'm going to go ahead and make a loop. Well, actually, I'll tunny up, tear off this other tunny, and uh, there'll be a couple of more steps. The time is at 7 o'clock. I started this video at uh, 6.15, I think, 6.20. So this, this one is turning into definitely more than an hour. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know if Facebook Live will cut me off. But, uh, I hope they don't. Anyway, it's Monday, you know, I mean, it's definitely a Monday kind of a day. So, if they do, then, oh well, I guess. Alright, so, I just attached the punny, which is just a temporary handle for those of you that aren't familiar with the, uh, the glass lingo. Punny, pun, a punty is literally, I think it's Italian for handle or something like that. I don't know, I don't speak Italian. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's an Italian word. So. Yeah, this thing is kind of cool. I'll tell you what, that blue and white color combination you know, there is almost, to me, no more appealing color combo than blue and white. Um, it's just so classic. It's, it's you know, kind of that nautical. Um, it's got great contrast. Um, and especially in the, in the world of glass, uh, both of those colors are just really good good colors and they, they take a beating that they're, they're not super picky colors um, so just and, and, and it literally is one of my absolute all-time favorite color combinations um, so so I'm just cleaning up where I where I put a punny and I melted it off on purpose I didn't crack it off because um, I wanted to actually leave a little bit of that that blue and white on there, so kind of dead in the center of this thing, we would have a uh, have a little swirly swirly doodad, you know, nice little spirally thing, which 
seems to be kind of a happening thing right now. So, yeah. So perception versus reality. You know, since I just had a birthday, one of the great things about birthdays, I think, and holidays and stuff like that in general, is, um, you know, all, you know, I had, I think I had 74 people um, on, just on Facebook wish me a happy birthday. I mean, how cool is that, you know? And, uh, and if that doesn't help my perception or the perception of my reality, I don't know what will, you know? So I just love that and I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, having time with, you know, good friends and family and, um, you know, on a birthday or during the holidays. It's just a, it's a great time, I think, to think about, you know, it, it helps me to remember what my reality actually is as opposed to, um, you know, having a bad attitude. You know, sometimes I get caught in that negative thinking and, um, and that's just, you know, I think a part of life. I think everybody does, but, um, you know, birthdays and holidays tend to snap me out of it. So, okay, it's really hot, or pretty hot right now, so you can't, you can start to see it in there. And that backside, man, that backside looks good. I think it does anyways, it's just kind of crazy. Wild style. So, um, Okay, I think the next step is going to be, I'm gonna make the bale for the pendant, then I'm gonna punt into the bale, then I'm gonna make the face. Um, I've done it, you know, with these steal your face designs, I've done it in several different ways. Um, and sometimes what ends up happening is I end up uh, at the very last step having to punny up to the, uh, um, to the actual face where the teeth are and I use a very light punny but even still what, what tends to happen is that it'll crack it so um, you know I don't claim to be an expert on, on making this particular pendant or really I don't claim to be an expert on anything in glass uh, but you know you kind of learn as you go you learn from mistakes um, so it's one of the things that I have learned is, um, you know, just the start, starting to think about the steps. What, what are the next steps in this process? So I welded another piece of clear on the top side of this thing. And uh, there are a lot of different ways to make bales for pendants. Um, but actually, what I'm about to do now is, I think, my favorite way, it's, it seems to be the most expedient way to. So I need to really make sure that this, the bottom part where I welded is really melted in well. Um, and uh, there's no, what's called a compound joint and uh, I, there's not a compound joint on there anymore. Um, so anyways, maybe I should have, since this pendant is fairly large, I should have used maybe a little bit larger rod, but I think it'll work out just fine. So I just heated this thing up to uh, what uh, Bandu calls al dente, or al dente. Uh, so if you guys are familiar with making pasta, that, that analogy kind of makes sense, right? It wasn't soupy, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't super hard anymore either. It's somewhere in the middle, you know? And uh, I like flattening them. You know, I like making the round rod a little bit flatter. I feel like it's just, uh, more well-refined kind of a technique. 
a lot of this stuff, you know, I can't take credit for, you know, coming up with these techniques. I actually should be giving credit where credit is due right now. Um, one of my good friends, uh, his name is Patrick. He goes by the real Coltrane on uh, Instagram, and uh, he's he's a uh, darn good glass blower. And uh, he kind of showed me how to make a pendant veil, or the way he likes making them. And there are a lot of different techniques, you know. Um, one of my other teachers makes them in a completely different way. Um, so it's kind of, you know, just something that. As I've gone along, I've, I've tried different ways of doing it, and I've kind of settled on this way being one of my favorites. So that's just kind of how I usually do it. Sometimes I do it other ways. Who knows? You know. So you can see it starting to kind of loop. I don't want this punty to become a super cold punty because I'm really going to be messing with this bot the bottom side of this thing to make it into a steal your face. Um, that's where we're at. Wild style. Man, isn't that ever cool. To this, into this piece. I, if I wasn't recording this, what I would probably do at this point is take a little break, put it in the kiln, and take a little break. Um, but it's okay. We're doing it. Okay. So I think maybe a blue steely. remember kind of what we're going for. Blue on blue. Blue on blue works. Blue is easy, man. Blue is like, it's tough stuff. There's a saying in the glass, in the glass world, when you don't know what to do, make it blue. Um, and that's really true. It's true blue.
try to think of Steelers as kind of like three stripes stacked on top of each other. And uh, there's this guy named Lucky, and he makes these Steelies that are just unbelievable. Um, and he's been doing them for a real long time. And um, I really haven't been doing these for a very long time. Um, and my Steelies uh, tend to appear a little bit different than his. Um, which I think is a good thing. You know, I, I wouldn't want to be exactly the same as, as the next guy uh, when it comes to, you know, making making my glass. You know, so I try to make my glass a little bit different. Um, now it's tweezer time, baby. Be some tweezing going on. Twerking them tweezers. Yeah, so when I did my birthday cake, uh, the thing that I really should have thought about before I selected the amber purple colors um, for the cake itself was actually, you know, thinking about sculpture and um, really it, it's I think it's pretty important to uh, pick colors that you can just beat the crap out of well it's important for me because I'm not a very um, well versed glass sculptor yet and I know there are a lot of glass artists out there that uh, that are, are uh, they can they can really hit the mark every time and me, sometimes what I have to do is go back in and keep working it and keep working it and uh, as a result of that, it, I tend to, with striking colors, I tend to muddy them up. Um, so my birthday cake I think would have looked a lot cooler had I, uh, had I picked a different color to use on that blank. But, you know, you live and you learn. There again, it kind of comes back to that, that idea of um, you know, and this being a learning process. All right, so this is kind of where we're at. And uh, I'm gonna have to heat up pretty hard in one place and smush those eyes in there, or those eye sockets in there. Come back and forth on this thing. And really, I have to get it pretty good and darn hot. One eye. Try to go to the next one. Kind of got the start of some eye sockets there. I think that still is going to be pretty cool. How many times do you burn yourself? Good question. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, um, I burn myself less frequently than I cut myself. I, as a matter of fact, I burn myself less frequently on the torch than I do in my kitchen. And I think the the reason for that is is that. Um, yeah, you know, I tend to be kind of hyper vigilant, right? When I'm when I'm sitting down here and I'm I'm working glass, you know, I know, oh shit, that's really hot. Um, so let me make sure and not touch it. I do burn myself occasionally. Like, don't get me wrong, I I, uh, I definitely do burn myself, but um, I cut myself more more often than I burn myself. So that's actually a pretty good question. Um, 
Okay, so we're starting to get some nostrils there. Sorry guys, I, I can't uh, stop too much in the middle of this thing here because uh, I, I, I really don't want it to crack on me. So we're starting to get some nostrils defined and uh, the, the very last thing to do is to make some teeth for this guy. So I really need to get um, a dedicated camera and uh, Well, you guys will be able to see if I had a. Uh, all right, so the teeth are tricky. I need to. I need to hush and concentrate. One more thing, kind of try to define this jawline a little bit. So, he's looking pretty steely right now, but I'm just going to take my butter knife and I'm going to heat up right there where the jaw bone would go into the uh, go into the actual jaw. I'm going to push it a little bit and uh, that will help to kind of define that shape a little bit more. And uh, we're going to call that good enough for right now. Good enough for government work. Um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, what I'll probably do is I'm going to throw this in the kiln, make sure, because it, it's getting cold right now. I'm going to make sure it doesn't crack on me. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I might add a little more detail to the eye sockets and stuff like that off camera. But um, thanks, everybody, for watching again. I certainly... Certainly appreciate you tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time.